Hey, Vlad here from DevInsideU.com. Welcome to another video. I've been making videos for over four years at this point and book reviews have always been a genre that I always wanted but never had the time to dive into. I've read many programming or at least programming adjacent books throughout the years and so the next couple of videos are going to be book reviews. I'll try to interspearse them with the regular videos of course, whatever regular means. Unless you're new here, you've probably heard me referring to SICP in many videos. I mentioned many times that I consider it to be the bible of not only functional but programming in general. I honestly don't think that there is a better book to begin this new series with. And yes, of course it's going to be a series. Let's get right to it. Alright, as I already mentioned, this is the first book review that I've ever made, so please be gentle with that dislike button, will you? First things first, what is it about? Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs is a book written by two MIT professors and one professor's wife in 1985, which makes it two years older than me. The book is available for free and for many years it was used as an introductory course to computer science at MIT and it was also used as a basis for many other books like Structure and Interpretation of Classical Mechanics or Essentials of Programming Languages and many many others. Now even though it was designed as an introductory course to computer science, please do not make the mistake of skipping the in MIT part. This book is a tough cookie. I never recommend it to people who are just starting out. I always advise to have at least a couple of years of experience before tackling this one. And the reason is that all the examples and all the exercises are in the domain of mathematics. So if you find math challenging, it's probably going to be hard to follow. To be clear, the concepts of this book have almost nothing to do with mathematics. It's just that all the examples and exercises are in the domain of mathematics. By the way, if you're just starting out in our industry and by some miracle stumbled on this video, then A, please don't forget to subscribe. B, I have a lot of introductory playlists on this channel and they're all heavily inspired by SICP. And C, if you find SICP challenging, then check out the book called How to Design Programs, which I haven't read yet, so please take this with a grain of salt, but apparently it addresses many pedagogical issues that some teachers and students had with SICP. Now, to be fair, SICP is still an introductory book, so even if you don't have any experience, you might give it a shot. Just don't give up if you find it dry or unsurmountable. Just leave it for a couple of years and come back to it. It's not like it's going anywhere. In fact, if you're someone who has many years of experience, I still highly recommend this book. Seriously, this book is legit. I read it twice. I need more friends. The purpose of the book is not only to teach you the basics of programming, but also how to design large computer programs. So even though it is a book about programming, it is arguably one of the most influential books about software design at the same time. So you get two for one. I sometimes like to compare SICP to the infamous Gang of Four book. The Gang of Four book gives you high level patterns and SICP gives you sort of like macronutrients. Both levels are useful, but if I were you, I would start bottom up with SICP. By the way, a long time ago, I made a video about the difference between programming, computer science, and software development. You might want to check it out. Now, the interesting part about the book, beyond the content, of course, is how it is structured. And yes, pun intended. It takes a very unique approach. They wrote a programming language called Scheme, a dialect of Lisp, and throughout the book, they pretty much show you how it was built, or in fact, they teach you how to build a language like this yourself, or in fact any other language. Scheme is probably the lightest programming languages out there when it comes to syntax. However, it uses the so-called prefix notation, so it's a bit unfamiliar and therefore harder to read. For example, instead of 2 plus 3, you would write plus and then 2 and 3. If you think about it, it's actually often more concise than the infix notation. The book starts out by talking about simple expressions and then shows you how to build more complex one by composing the simple ones, the classic functional programming approach. Then it continues by discussing abstractions, procedures, and so on. More importantly, it teaches you about the simplest model for procedure application, namely the substitution model. If you've never heard this computer science term before, simply think functional programming. It is very interesting that this model is introduced very early on page 18 and what is even more interesting is that the book spans around 300 pages without ever mentioning assignment. And when I say assignment, I mean reassignment. The initial assignment is usually called binding. Unfortunately, assignment breaks this very simple substitution model and therefore a more complex model needs to be introduced so that we can continue reasoning about our programs. This model is called the environment model of events. 
evaluation. In this more complex model, the variables are not simply aliases for some values. They're only aliases within some context or environment. Therefore, these aliases cannot simply be substituted by their values without knowing the context or the environment. If you've never heard this computer science term before, the environment model of evaluation, then simply think object-oriented programming. Assignment is made appealing and necessary. However, less than 100 pages later, concurrency is introduced, and it turns out that assignment poses a lot of challenges for concurrency, and so yet another model is introduced called stream processing. What I really liked about this book is humility. At no point do the authors claim one model to be better than the other. For instance, stream processing mitigates a lot of issues with concurrency, but ultimately doesn't solve them. In fact, the book even poses some philosophical questions, arguing that we might never be able to solve the issues with concurrency. If you've ever heard of the curry Hubbard lambda correspondence, and I have a video about it, you might want to check it out, it actually doesn't have an answer for concurrency. But let's not deviate from the topic, this is a book review after all. After finishing discussing those models, the book suggests that no matter which programming language you choose, at a certain size of the program, even the best language is not enough. In order to manage the complexity of such programs, you are encouraged to write programming languages inside of the programming language in question. Those programming languages that you're going to write are going to be very specific to your domain. Therefore, they're called the DSLs, or the domain-specific languages, or the way the book likes to call them is metalinguistic abstraction. It suggests that we, the programmers, should view ourselves as language creators instead of simply language users. The last section therefore teaches us how to write compilers and evaluators, which are commonly referred to as interpreters. In all honesty, you might consider skipping this entire section. Oh, by the way, did I mention that it's over 800 pages long in its second edition, which came out in 1996? All right, so to sum it up, if you're someone who really, really cares about programming or wants to learn about the essence or the fundamentals of programming, I highly recommend this book. It's gonna be a tough read, but it's worth it. It covers everything you need to know. In fact, it even talks about logic programming. In fact, I'm gonna make the following bold claim. If you go through SICP, and to understand it, of course, you should be able to pick up any language in a weekend or two. Seriously, if you've been through a couple of them, you know that they're not as different as they seem. I give this book a solid nine out of 10. It could have been a 10 out of 10 if it wasn't so long and tough. Seriously, the examples and the exercises don't need to be in the domain of math. It doesn't need to feel like a math book. By the way, these folks are still live and kicking and they recently published another book called Software Design for Flexibility, How to Avoid Programming Yourself into a Corner. I'll definitely check it out at some point. Cool, I hope you enjoyed my very first book review and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad from devinsidey.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did, subscribe if you want to improve the developer inside you, and if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whichever you prefer, and as watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.